നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഡോക്ടർ നമിത പവാറാണ് ഡോക്ടർ സ്പെഷ്യലിസ്റ്റ് ഗൈനക്കോളജിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഓപ്റ്റിട്രീഷൻ ആണ് അപ്പോൾ എന്തായാലും ഈ ഒരു വിഷയത്തിനെ കുറിച്ച് കൂടുതൽ ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് നമുക്ക് ഡോക്ടറോട് തന്നെ ചോദിച്ച് മനസ്സിലാക്കാം ഡോക്ടർ ഗുഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർനൂൺ ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദ ഷോ so yeah. as i mentioned in the introduction this is something gestational diabetes and hypertension is something very common in pregnancies yeah. compared to previous uh, times it's very common now i believe yes. so what is exactly this gestational diabetes or how it's causing this okay gestational diabetes uh, to explain is the development of uh, diabetes mm-hmm. or uh, high blood sugar mm-hmm. in a pregnant women okay that means it uh, remains undiagnosed in the state of uh, non pregnancy okay. but pregnancy itself is a situation which causes the development of diabetes okay and that uh, term is known as a gestational diabetes okay. so it happens more uh, commonly after the 20 weeks of pregnancy okay and in the later half of the pregnancy mm-hmm. and uh, nowadays uh, incidence of diabetes is increasing uh, as as uh, such also in the general population yes, and similarly exactly. in the pregnancy also it is reflecting the similar trend okay and we have been having uh, so many patients with uh, gestational diabetes these days yeah so what will be the causes for this uh, gestational diabetes especially when this is getting you know presented during the pregnancy what could be the reason for that well, the reason could be that uh, pregnancy itself is a diabetogenic state the hormones of pregnancy you know we have the uh, human placenta lactogen and the certain hormones which are released from the placenta okay. and they act opposite to insulin oh, okay. you know insulin has a role in uh, reducing the diabetes or mm-hmm. uh, causing the cells of the body to use that sugar okay. whereas the hormones of the pregnancy they act just opposite to insulin okay, and they okay. prevent the role of insulin to act and hence the blood sugar rises okay okay fine so if there is the pre existing diabetic condition in a patient so mm-hmm. is there a chance that uh, you know she develops later on uh, diabetes or something like that or if she is having gestational diabetes there is sure shot of a chance that she gets diabetes in the later years of her life there is something like that yes it may happen uh, uh, sometimes uh, most of the cases the diabetes should clear off because as okay. we said that it is related to pregnancy mm-hmm. and that's why when the delivery happens mm-hmm. the hormones of the placenta also there are not there anymore in the blood okay. and that's why the condition sets back to the original situation as in a non pregnant state okay. but uh, there are some yes around 30% patients are there mm-hmm. who will have the diabetes continued in the later later stage also mm-hmm. and um, these patients they will have uh, in the when they are delivered already and then when we see the incidence in the later years of life the mm-hmm. incidence will be definitely more as compared to those who never developed diabetes in pregnancy exactly exactly and you know these uh, patients who are uh, at more risk of diabetes these are the ones uh, who have had a uh, family history of diabetes mm-hmm. you know or those who ladies who have had diabetes in the previous pregnancies okay. they have more chance of developing diabetes in the, this pregnancy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. those who have had a very big baby okay. you know diabetes it itself if uncontrolled it causes the baby to become very big and okay. those who have suppose a patient gives a history that i have had a baby who is 4 kg in the previous birth and i have had a difficult or traumatic delivery mm. in that case and suppose she has got recurrent uh, miscarriages mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and suppose there is a, in the previous history is very b- bad obstetric history in which there is a death of a baby sudden intrauterine okay. death has happened okay. so all these um, uh, scenarios you know they cause al- uh, cause alert in our mind that yes we have to check this patient for diabetes okay okay So, if we mention the risk factors that's mm-hmm. caused by diabetes mm-hmm. in detail, so mm-hmm. what could be those risk factors? In- See, uh, like we can have uh, diabetes itself uh, can affect the mother mm. itself and the baby yes, also. Yes, of course. So, for the mother, uh, the diabetes can uh, affect her kidneys, which we call as a diabetic nephropathy. If it is okay. not controlled, it may have a bad effect on the kidneys. Mm-hmm. Also, it can affect the eyes. Mm. You know, the retina of the eyes. The mm-hmm. vision may be affected if mm-hmm. not controlled. it may affect the nerves the diabetic neuropathy mm. and also if uh, diabetes in pregnancy if not controlled it can give rise to very big baby and okay. it may give rise to more uh, volume water volume or liquor we call it around okay. the placenta okay. that is called as polyhydramnios mm. and in that condition the lady will have a very very discomfort because of the uh, over distension of the abdomen okay this way and also because the liquor volume is more there is more chance that sometimes the leakage of fluid can happen okay yeah and in that case a sudden gush of the fluid from the um, uh, uterus can lead to bleeding sudden bleeding you know we okay, call it a condition okay. abruptio placenti that can be really serious okay. and uh, because of this one the patient may have to have a premature delivery also at times mm-hmm. and because of the premature delivery you see the baby and then the mother both will be uh, suffering okay okay and uh, if we see that for the mother the chance of cesarean section also increases okay. in a diabetic mother okay. and if the cesarean happens because of the high blood sugar it may happen that wound healing will be delayed yes of course as yes. compared to a normal population mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and also it may, it may be sometimes you know a traumatic delivery or a difficult delivery because of a big baby and mm-hmm. she may have some birth complications as well yes yeah. 
And as far as the complications for the baby is concerned, uh, you know, in the uh, if the diabetes is uncontrolled in the initial uh, part of the pregnancy, which we call as the first trimester, mm. the first three months of pregnancy, excess blood sugar leads to uh, miscarriages also. Okay. It may lead to the um, uh, some congenital abnormalities in the baby, okay. especially abnormalities of the heart, abnormalities of the kidney and the nervous system, they are common for the baby. Mm -hmm. And um, at times when it is uncontrolled, it may lead to a sudden intrauterine death, which mm -hmm. we call sudden stillbirth. Mm -hmm. That may also happen. Okay. And sometimes uh, diabetes can lead to a big baby, as I mentioned. Yeah, of but at times, if suppose the placental uh, blood flow to the baby is affected, it mm -hmm. may lead also to a growth retardation of the baby. So we okay. call it intrauterine growth retardation. Okay. Even that may happen. Okay. So it, both ways, it can okay. have a very small baby also, a very big baby also. Okay. And of course, uh, if there is suppose a preterm delivery, mm -hmm. then in that case, a baby will have to be admitted in the neonatal ICU for okay. quite a long time. And there are uh, complications of prematurity. Okay. For instance, there can be uh, lung problems, the uh, breathing problems for the baby. And also uh, some gastrointestinal problems can happen. And the baby can have the sugar problems also, yeah. hypoglycemia. Okay, I was about to ask yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it has been also mentioned that uh, those babies who are, uh, they are called as a, uh, babies of diabetic mothers, mm. infant of diabetic mother, mm. in the later life also, they have a chance of developing diabetes. Yeah, exactly. And also yes. developing obesity in the later life. Okay, okay. Yeah. Apart from this uh, insulin problems or glucose problems, is there any other lifestyle problems that cause gestational diabetes? Yes, obesity is one very important factor. Mm -hmm. Those patients who have, a, we call it the basal metabolic uh, index, which is more than the normal. Mm -hmm. That means the patients who are weight is on the uh, more side mm -hmm. of the normal population, they will have a more tendency to develop diabetes. Okay. And also those who have a family history yeah. running in their families. And those in the previous pregnancy, if they have had, have had diabetes, that makes them more prone to have in this pregnancy. Okay. So it is actually very important to have a, uh, maintain a good lifestyle and a healthy lifestyle prior to the pregnancy itself, yes. in the, the preconception period. Yes, yes. You know, because in the, that is a time where a person uh, who has been having diabetes before should see that the, where they reach a euglycemic control. That mm. means the blood sugar should reach a normal level. Okay. And the weight should also be kept within check so that the complications do not happen when they get pregnant. Okay. So if uh, somebody is already having diabetes, and is there any chance or any problem in getting conceived? Well, uh, it may happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, the, the patient may have problem in conception. Okay. And as I mentioned, that if conception happens, may lead to miscarriages and may oh. lead to the anomalies babies also. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now coming to the diagnosis part mm -hmm. of uh, gestational diabetes, how this is screened? See, these days we do a universal screening mm -hmm. because um, some patients, most of the patients may, may not have diabetes in the pre-pregnant state. Yeah. That means they develop during the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we have to have a certain test mm -hmm. which is called as a universal screening. Okay. And we do that between the 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Okay. That is offered to all the women. Mm -hmm. And the test, what is done is the patient has to come in a fasting state mm -hmm. and we give them uh, 75 gram glucose mm -hmm. juice and after that that will be blood sugar will be checked like three times mm -hmm. in the fasting state after one hour after mm -hmm. glucose, after two hours of, of glucose. And there are certain criteria or certain limits above which it comes in the definition of diabetes. Okay. So uh, that's how we see the do the universal screening. Mm -hmm. So when uh, we done between 24 to 28 weeks. Okay. But uh, there are certain cases in which we have to do this uh, screening test at the outset only, at the first visit. Okay. Okay. You know, in those patients, for example, who are more than 40 years of age, who have had okay. a previous diabetes, who have family history, who are obese, mm. and those who have had a previous stillbirth, previous dead baby, or previous okay. many miscarriages they have had. Yeah. So in these cases, we should not wait. For the 26 or weeks or 24 weeks, we have to do the glucose uh, tolerance test at the first visit only. Okay. All That's right. how to uh, diagnose it in the early part itself. Okay. Now, yeah. coming to the management part, like in this uh, pregnancy period, there are limitations for so many medications what Correct. a patient can take, right? right? So, coming to the management of this gestational diabetes, what all the treatment uh, options? Okay. The most important uh, thing, uh, and that has to be emphasized to the patient also, now, and a family that um, the control of blood sugar is most important. Okay. See, if the blood sugar is controlled, mm -hmm. then it is just uh, like a normal pregnancy only. Okay. What creates problem is a high blood sugar. Okay. So, we start uh, to emphasize the importance of a regular checkup. Okay. Uh, to the coming mm -hmm. to the clinic, to the hospital for a regular checkup. And we start with a uh, good diet control. Yes. And in this case, uh, the role of a dietitian also comes in. Mm -hmm. We uh, fix an appointment with the dietitian. They give them the uh, diet chart. Okay. Where how many number of calories, how much from the carbohydrate from the protein, from the fat, and they have to take more fiber in the diet, more mm. water intake. Okay. They have to avoid the highly processed foods and the direct carbohydrates, for instance, chocolates and sweets and all. You have to have, they have to have this control. 
and most of the patients will do it because they know that it's yeah. for their own good and for the baby's good, you know. So we start with the diet control and then we give them the, we explain them the home glucose monitoring. Okay. So at home they have to monitor their glucose. Okay. You know, because they cannot come to the clinic or the hospital every every week or every two weeks, they can't come. So they have to do it at home. Mm -hmm. They will do the good diet control and after one week or two weeks, they will check okay. the fasting sugar, then mm -hmm. after breakfast and lunch and dinner. Okay. And the, if it goes above a certain value, then they will revert back to us. And when we will start uh, for them some oral uh, diabetic medications, okay. anti-diabetic medications. And we put them on that and there are some which are safe for the mother and for the baby. Okay. And um, if suppose it is not controlled with the uh, medi oral medication also, then we have to shift over to insulin. Yes. So and, um, insulin yeah. is uh, okay during this uh, period? Yes, insulin is a very safe uh, medicine. And okay. uh, uh, for the first time users, we, would, uh, we will explain them how to take okay. and what is the dose and how to monitor the sugar level mm -hmm. and uh, hypoglycemia. That means sometimes low blood sugar should not happen. Okay. If the patient okay. is taking insulin, they have to see that they eat a proper meal. Okay. You know, and uh, uh, explain they have to have a very good meal in the sense that they should uh, take small frequent meal, mm -hmm. not eating a bulk amount at uh, one time and not keeping a large gap between a meal. Yes, Otherwise, yes. that may lead to a low blood sugar level. That may also be dangerous. Okay. So, when you're talking about this low blood sugar level, mm -hmm. is there any cases like uh, instead of having gestational diabetes, there are patients with low blood sugar? Is there any well, situations um, uh, like that? Mostly it happens, uh, the state of low blood sugar happens in those who have diabetes and oh, what okay. they have taken the medicine and taken insulin but not eaten and low blood sugar happens. Okay. And low blood sugar can happen in the early part of pregnancy in some cases. For instance, okay. patient was more vomiting yeah, and they, yeah, got, yeah. they are not able to eat and in that case they come to us with uh, weakness and lethargy and in that case a low blood sugar is there. Okay, so you mean to say that this low blood sugar is an indication that uh, she could develop uh, diabetes in the previous stages of uh, pregnancy. Is there anything like that? Not like that. Not like, Not that. like okay. that. Okay. But then uh, are there any complications uh, developed due to this low blood sugar? Low blood I'm, sugar? I'm talking like, you know, previously before pregnancy, if somebody is having low blood sugar mm -hmm. and if they get conceived, you know, mm -hmm. after that, what are the complications uh, happening because of that? Low blood sugar patient will have, um, um, will always be in a state of, you know, weakness and lethargy and yes. not able to focus on work. It limits the concentration, yes. ability to work properly and it may also affect the development of the baby. So again, the okay. importance of a good diet comes in there. Okay, okay. Yeah. So diet, lifestyle management Very is important, important because, of yeah, especially everything. Especially for the working women also, you know, those who are at home, they may focus more those who are at work, you know, in the this busy lifestyle and those who are working women and pregnancy and with diabetes, it, they have to have a you know balance between the work and their lifestyle and the baby's part. Okay. Now, apart from having a big baby or a premature labor or uh, other than all those things, mm -hmm. is there any other complications develops during the labor? Mm -hmm. Because of this gestational diabetes. Because of gestational diabetes, um, uh, uh, as I told you, that uh, high blood sugar level may affect the uh, blood flow to the placenta, or okay. it may affect the we call it the uteroplacental insufficiency. Okay. In that cases, sometimes it may happen that the uh, the heartbeat of the baby may dip, dip down, or the baby can have the fetal distress. Okay. So in that case, the mother may not mother when undergoing the normal labor, she may have to have an emergency cesarean at times. Okay. You know, okay. because of the hypoglycemia, it leads to hypoxia to the baby. That means mm -hmm. low oxygen to the baby and that may reflect in the form of a fetal distress. Okay. And they may have to have a cesarean section. Okay. And also, as I explained to you, that sometimes uh, excessive bleeding can happen because of sudden leakage of the fluid, because of more fluid okay. around the baby. Mm -hmm. And that can also lead to some placental abnormalities and emergency operation may have to be done okay, okay. in these patients. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, these times uh, some patients uh, mm -hmm. prefer cesarean optionally. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that trend in some cases. I don't know how far it's possible here in UAE, but in India it's very well possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, but then uh, as a doctor, uh, what you suggest? Always uh, normal delivery is good or optional cesareans are good? See, it is always a risk versus benefit. Okay. It's not that if you have diabetes, you have to have a cesarean mm -hmm. only. No, mm -hmm. there are so many factors. If the sugar is well controlled, if the yes. baby's weight is okay, if they're like around the baby is okay, if we find that by the ultrasound, the development, everything is okay and uh, the, uh, the Doppler study, that means the blood flow around the, uh, from, from the placenta coming to the baby, that is normal. And the mother and baby are both okay, why not for a normal delivery? Yes. Yes. Then the patient has to be aware that anytime any complication happens, she may have to be reverted to an emergency cesarean. Yeah. But in general case, always it's preferable to go for a normal delivery. Right? Yes. Yeah. yes yeah. Doctor, I think we covered almost about diabetes. Now yes. let's uh, go to the second topic that is hypertension. So okay. basically, what is hypertension? Okay, well, um, hypertension means the development of a high blood pressure mm -hmm. 
in um, uh, when we are talking about pregnancy, so, so in this pregnant state, especially after 20 weeks of pregnancy. Okay. Well, we divide it into three categories. Okay. One is in, called as a pregnancy induced hypertension. Okay. And uh, then comes the second category which is called as a uh, preeclampsia. Okay. And then the very serious one which is called as an eclampsia. Okay. So, you can understand that um, a simple uh, blood pressure reading mm -hmm. of a uh, beyond the normal range mm -hmm. and we consider the normal range 140 mm -hmm. above 90. Okay. millimeters of mercury. Okay. So, and uh, blood pressure reading going beyond this mm. is called as a pregnancy induced hypertension. Okay. If suppose there happens uh, development of proteinuria which means that there is a leakage of protein from the kidney okay. and protein starts leaking in the urine okay. then it is called as a preeclampsia okay. and at times when it is not diagnosed and not treated it may lead to very serious condition in which the patient starts getting high blood pressure along with the convulsions or fits okay. Okay. and it can be life threatening and that is called as a eclampsia. Okay. So, why, why a lady is developing hypertension during pregnancy or what is triggering it? Okay, again it happens that pregnancy itself because of certain uh, placental conditions, it happens that uh, because of the placental abnormalities that may lead to the development of hypertension. So, basically mm -hmm. it's because of the state of pregnancy itself okay. that a mother develops blood pressure. Okay. And uh, especially that happens more if she has had a, again a history of hypertension in the previous pregnancies okay. or if there's a family history okay. that can predispose to that plus those who are obesity. Again, okay. we discussed obesity in the previously yes. diabetes and yes. it has got a role in the development of hypertension as well. Okay. So, apart from this uh, high BP, uh, are there any other uh, symptoms or any, you know, Kind yes. of, uh, presentations. You see, most of the time uh, the patient may be asymptomatic and she just okay. comes to a clinic and we measure the blood pressure and the nurse tells her that the reading is above mm. the uh, defined category. Oh. And uh, sometimes the patient can also come with a uh, complaint of excessive weight gain oh, and okay. she may uh, complain of uh, excessive accumulation of fluid and that is swelling in the legs. So, okay. these are the two symptoms she can present or severe headache. Uh -huh, if okay. uh, headache, she comes with headache, this is an alarming signal maybe because of the hypertension. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in severe cases, she can have the blurred vision, she can have the confusion okay. and in the cases of eclampsia, which I told you is that is a serious condition in which she can come with fits and shock also. Okay. Apart from this general body conditions, for the pregnancy or for the fetus, mm -hmm. what are the complications? Uh, well, for the mother, uh, as I told you that um, hypertension uh, itself is can be very serious if not treated mm -hmm. because uh, it may lead to uh, kidney problems. Mm -hmm. There is a condition which is called as HELP syndrome mm. in which um, uh, the blood platelets will be affected, the clotting will be affected in which severe bleeding can happen and uh, it can affect the liver enzymes, it can affect the kidneys, okay. you know, and then the patient gets convulsion, it affects the brain and she may develop into a shock also. Okay. And uh, hypertension sometimes is associated with... Uh, Severe sudden uh, bleeding from the uterus, uh, okay. from the placenta, which mm -hmm. is called as abruptio placentae, that can also be life threatening. Okay. And other than the complications which can result in the mother, mm -hmm. the baby can also suffer. Yeah. How the baby can suffer in the form that because of the excessive uh, blood pressure, the baby's growth may be affected. Okay. That we call as the intrauterine growth retardation. Okay. And the baby can have at any time, it can have uh, fetal distress and okay. uh, more complications of uh, more risk of uh, admission into the neonatal ICU and mm -hmm. such a baby of a hypertensive mother after delivery also may need more care and management. Okay. And are there any chances of developing any kind of diseases for such babies? Well, in the long run, no, mm -hmm. because you know, as I told you that uh, because of the pregnancy, it's, it is pregnancy induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. So, the ultimate, uh, the treatment and management we uh, give to the mother is we give them the antihypertensive medications and you know, regular monitoring. And we do the uh, checkup, regular checkup of the mother mm -hmm. in the form of uh, she will have a regular visits to the clinic. Mm -hmm. And also for the baby, we do a checkup, we do the uh, continuous serial monitoring of the growth of the baby. Okay. We see what is the status of the amniotic fluid, the liquor volume, you know. And uh, when the baby uh, delivers at that time, uh, she may have the risk of cesarean section also. Okay. More okay. chance of that. But other than that, in the long run, uh, when the baby, uh, when the uh, treatment of uh, hypertension is actually delivery. Okay. So, once okay. you have delivered the baby, mm -hmm. the baby is delivered, the risk of the baby may be a prematurity. Okay. Why? Because you may have to have a uh, early caesarean okay. or a premature caesarean. Okay. So, once you have delivered the baby, the baby may have the risk of prematurity and that uh, the neonatologist, a good neonatology center will manage that. Manage and it. the mother, for the mother, even after the delivery of the baby, she we have to be very alert till the six weeks. Okay. You know, the postpartum time, the six weeks, okay, she may okay. have the risk of developing the complications of high blood pressure. Okay. So, we have to see uh, because in some patients, it may linger on 
even beyond that postpartum period. Okay. And some patients may have the uh, tendency to develop it even in the later years. Yeah. You know, in the coming, of, yeah, in yeah. the coming pregnancy or the later pregnancy also. Okay. Apart from pregnancy, are there any chances that they have, you know, they will get uh, hypertension in the later stages of their life? Yes, it is a risk in itself. Okay. And okay. for most of the patients, so just like happens in diabetes and in, in the pregnancy-induced hypertension also. The blood pressure should be controlled and should come back to normal. Okay. And okay. Uh, but we have to be very, very vigilant in that period, mm -hmm. you know, because patient will think that I am pregnant and I am taking the medicines for the baby's sake, and now okay. I have delivered, and she may, um, uh, you know, not ignore the her condition. Okay. So that uh, part is also very important in the post delivery six weeks period. Okay. And then um, for most of them, it should clear. Okay. But then yes, there is a chance that uh, some of them may develop it in the later part Late also, history, yes. early development of hypertension. Okay, fine. Now coming to the uh, diagnosis and treatment part of hypertension, what mm -hmm. are the measures? Okay, so for the uh, diagnosis part, um, uh, the patient has to have a, when she comes to the clinic routinely, we check the um, vital signs and most important is the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Any high reading of blood pressure, in which the blood pressure, we call it the systolic, the upper and the lower blood pressure, mm -hmm. when it goes beyond the range of 140 over 90, mm -hmm. this is a mild hypertension. Okay. Then when it goes beyond that, uh, we see and we do, do a urine test in which we see the leakage of protein in the urine. Okay. We call it proteinuria mm -hmm. or the microalbuminuria. Okay. That is seen and also we check the kidney function values, we check the uric acid, we check the urea creatinine, that's how. Okay. For the mother's part and for the baby's part, we have to uh, check the ultrasound, we do the growth monitoring serial growth monitoring every four weeks where we see that whether, whether or not the baby's growth is affected or no. Mm -hmm. And we um, also see the liquor volume because mm -hmm. sometimes in high blood pressure, the placenta may not be able to release the amniotic fluid and that amniotic fluid level may fall down. Okay, That okay. is another thing that we have to take care. And uh, we do the cardiotocogram and we yeah. do the ultrasound monitoring. That's how we see and okay. diagnose. And are there any complications uh, during the labor stage? Because during the yeah eating. during the labor stage, uh, one important complication is development of abruptio. Okay. Abruptio, as I told you, that it is a uh, association of high blood pressure with a, a placental bleeding because okay. of the bed of the placenta starts bleeding, and the patient may have a complication related to bleeding and shock for the mother mm -hmm. as well as for the baby. Okay. So that some, at times becomes a very emergent cesarean. Mm -hmm. It has to be done at times to for the mother's sake and for the baby's sake. Okay. That complication can happen for the baby. Then uh, if the in the mother, uh, if suppose uh, there is a proteinuria and the blood pressure is uh, not controlled and she ignores and she comes from a far off area and she is yeah. having no regular antenatal checkup and that, that time she can come with convulsions. We mm -hmm. see in the emergency room that the patient has, there is a patient who has a high blood pressure and mm -hmm. who is pregnant and who has convulsions. Okay. And these convulsion development of fits can be really very, very life threatening situation for the baby as well as for the mother. Okay. Because she can develop in shock, she can develop uh, brain abnormalities and her kidney and liver function may also be affected. Okay. So it is very, very important that the routine antenatal checkup has to be done and any blood pressure should not be ignored and whatever medicines the doctor is prescribing should be taken and uh, that's yeah. how the pregnancy should be a happy part. Yeah. yeah, so any preventive measures that we can take apart from the medications or other than that uh, mm -hmm. to avoid this, what are the measures we can take? Yeah. Other than the medications, uh, one I told you is because obesity is a very important yes. coincidence factor. So again. Uh, a uh, patient has to see that the weight doesn't, you know, rise beyond yeah. a certain value. And uh, a healthy lifestyle is very important, regular walks and uh, not taking uh, too much of oily or processed or fatty food, mm -hmm. too much of salt intake, that is a table salt or excessive salt has to be avoided. And a good healthy diet plus with regular exercise, that is a really very, very yeah. uh, Yes. We have a misconception that, you know, during pregnancy, we have to eat for two people and, you know, we keep on gulping things during pregnancy. So, is there anything like that we have to eat for two people or something like that is there? Or? Well, uh, uh, eating for two people is not that uh, uh, correct. We, we should say that they should go, uh, take a very healthy diet, yeah. healthy, balanced and nutritious diet, you know. Not uh, increase some, we feel that increase in weight will be for the increase of the health of the baby. Yes. But it may not be always true because yes. uh, then again we say the obesity leads to development of diabetes and blood pressure. So a healthy balanced diet where we see that we should uh, incorporate in her diet that there should be more protein and there should be enough fat plus also the minerals and the vitamins and lot of fiber in the diet and the whole grain she must take in yes. the diet. She should take lot of milk products which includes the cheese and the butter and yogurt and she should take the fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And excessive salt anyway is not good. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Doctor, thank you so much. Uh, we are almost uh, up for the time. Thank you so much for thank the detailed for information. Yes, I'm going to care and your segment. You're also